I suspect Mr. Dobson in the woodhead with the uh, Petzl based ad hoc lighting rig. It's kind of dark as you may be able to gather but all I can see is kind of two bright shining LEDs in my face above a curve that must be the lens of a large camera which I'm holding in my hand. So yeah. Anyway, I've made it to this hut. Um, I don't know its name. I can't be bothered with names. Too many names. Swedish names. Confusing Swedish names. And I've got here. And um, there were some people here. I walked up and I saw there was a tent outside. And I thought, oh, there's some people here. So I, I walk up to the door and there's somebody I can see on the, there's a little bit of a window on the door and somebody's leaning against it and so I knock on the door and uh, probably the poor person jumped right out of their skin um, anyway so yeah there's um, a German family and a German couple all travelling in a, a big group of six um, four adults and two children aged nine and seven and they've been walking down from kind of the Narvik area or well, not quite, the, no, not oh, some other Swedish town right on the border don't ask me the name or at least get me to point to it on a map anyway they've been walking down here and then they're going to be heading back exactly the way I've come to um, Abisko, Abisko. Um, and it's been pretty cool because uh, We've, uh, well, they, they're, they're really friendly. I mean, um, really, really friendly. Obviously, it's quite tight here with it being unmanned station. So there's only two beds in the room with a stove and a kitchen. So um, they, I, I'm quite happy to let them have that. Um, and also, that's they're the families in there, in fact, four of them. Um, on, t on two sets of bunk beds I'll let them do that um, and then there's two of them in a tent so I'm sleeping in the woodshed which actually is not as bad as it sounds it's a building and it's dry um, and I can quite happily set my sleeping roll back down on the middle of a nice wooden floor and um, sure it's not kind of boiling hot but my sleeping bag takes care of that but it's completely dry and uh, I've got my tent hanging up which is great news and I've been able to cook food not on any meths which has been great um, and they've shared some of their food with me which has been quite cool though it's kind of sad that I don't really have that much that I can kind of pass over to them in return um, I've been doing what I can um, so hopefully we'll stay in touch there anyway because they're great <laughs> I've been playing we've been all playing kind of games around the table so I've been playing strange dice games for under 10 year olds which is interesting brings back brings back things gets one <coughs> well basically if you put someone like me in that kind of situation I start trying to work out what the game theory is in as much detail as possible and um, well at the end of the day a lot of it's down to the luck of the dice uh, however much game theory you put in so hmm that sucks <laughs> um, today's walking was easier than the day before the day I was whinging about previously it wasn't you know incredibly easy but it was easier um, I don't know whether that was because I put my back into it more or it, but it was actually easier terrain. I've kind of warned these guys who've they've, they've been here before and uh, are really interesting people, really, really friendly people. I'm really happy to have met them. Um, yeah, they're walking back the same way that I've come, so I've, I've, I've told them what I thought about the path and it being overgrown and they'll be fine, but it's a bit interesting. They um, kind of warned me about the path that I'm going to attempt tomorrow. Um, you know, it's going over 1,300 metres, and so there's going to be some snow. Um, I've pointed to my ice axe, and, you know, I'll turn back if necessary. Um, but I'm going to give it a go. And I've pointed out that I've got, you know, tent and all, all the kit that I have. 
So, you know, they're, they're reassured that I'm not going to do anything stupid, which I'm not. Um, and, you know, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. If, if, if it's really bad, I'll turn back. It's not a big deal. Um, but it shouldn't be. Um, it's 12 kilometres tomorrow. Probably about six to seven hundred metres of ascent and descent. Um, and there's a hut at the other end. So, it shouldn't be that much of a big deal. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that the reason... The largest problem is going to be me needing to stop to rest my back. Um, not rest my legs, or rest my body, but rest my back. So, the uphill, per se, shouldn't slow me down at all. Um, just the rucksack. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm going to put on... Well, I'm going to put on, kind of, clothes right up to the teeth. Uh, clothes mode, storm level 9 or something. Um, so try and kind of prepare myself as much best as possible um, for the coldest, windiest I could foresee. Um, but I mean it shouldn't really be that bad. It might be bad, but it shouldn't be that bad. It's a well marked path, it's a snowmobile track so it's got red crosses on sticks every like 10 metres so that's not an exaggeration really. It's about 10 to 20 metres. Um, so I shouldn't lose the path. The path doesn't really seem to do anything dangerous on the kind of like steep sided slopes or anything. Um, and there's a well marked summer path. So it should just be a matter of getting up there, walking over some snow, walking down the other side, making a cup of tea, going to bed. Which has pretty much been what today's been like. Um, yeah. So anyway, meeting these people has been um, a pleasant surprise. Um, and now I'm going to go to sleep. Good night.